Okay, meanwhile, we are telling you a joke or a story. <laughs> so, um, actually, a couple of uh, months later, we st people. Okay, a couple of. No, no. A couple of months later, uh, a couple, couple of months ago, we were starting thinking about organizing something with the Smart City Week. And uh, we said, okay, we want to have 200 people. And everyone was like, laughing at us, how come you managed to get 200 people on a Thursday night in, at Spec and Tech? And actually, in the meantime, we grew. We had uh, first 100 people, then 150, then 180. And actually, today, there was 250 uh, registrations. And the problem is that we are too many in this room. Like 12 people more, for, for safety reason. Thanks, our Zometra. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we need to ask 12 people from maybe this area to to leave the room. No, no, no. <laughs> no okay, somebody that um, can actually leave the room and move into the other one. We will have a streaming. It will take one second. Uh, you can see everything. Enjoy the event, uh, and uh, you will actually let the event happen. Otherwise, it won't happen. Thanks, Roberto. <laughs> No, he's actually the speaker, so. <laughs> okay, somebody else? Otherwise, we will need to pick somebody because uh, the event is not going to happen for safety reasons. Sorry about that. Okay, an applause for our people. It's actually not a matter of the people sitting here, it's a, it's a matter of this, the chairs. And they told us it was 140, now it's 130. So, yeah, we need to adapt. Uh, it's, uh, you, you remember probably almost one year ago in Torino, uh, it was the Champions League final, and uh, in this space there were so many people, and it was too crowded, and then a uh, bottle broke, uh, and so several bottles broke, and there were like, I don't know, six people that died, something like that, because of troubles. We don't want this to happen, and I think it's a, it's a good thing that the municipality is doing, uh, of being uh, very, very precise uh, on the numbers. Whoa, 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 we're ready to start. Hello. So, 
We had this uh, little problem uh, since this is the uh, most crowded event of the Trento Smart City Week. Uh, we couldn't make it in just one room. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm not joking, I mean, we are wonderful. Look at how many people, <laughs> two rooms, even Francesco, beautiful Francesco. So uh, we had this big problem and we had some security issues. So thank you very much for being so patient yeah. and yeah, yeah. migrating through the rooms and everything else. I know it's boring even for us, but <laughs> yeah, let's do here. it anyway. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, so yeah, spec we attack it. number. Spec and tech number 21. Yeah, not because I don't remember the number, but <laughs> thank you, Francesco. Spec and tech number 21. How many of you don't actually know what's spec and tech? What? Uh, we can see even in the other room. Raise your hands. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hi, guys. Thank you for being here. <laughs> we love so, you. So probably many of you know us. We are a community of startups, of entrepreneurs, of uh, developers, of designers, people that actually are living in Trento, are passionate about technology and want to build something, build a network, connect uh, from the companies with the research, connect the university with the talents, and connect uh, the talents with the companies and so on. And we really want to make something big and we are doing it already. We had already 20 events with over 2,000 participants. Which is 21. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is the 21st. <laughs> no, plus uh, a number of extra events, actually. Um, probably many of you know us, and this is an average room, an average night of spec and tech. The room is a bit different. It's longer and uh, not even longer. It's longer and uh, a bit shorter. Uh, at the same time, as you can see, the, the audience is pretty different. We have a lot of young people. We have a lot of developers and a lot of uh, people from companies as well. We really need to thank the people behind this. As you can see, it's these mad guys here. Yeah, it's not just me and Francesco. Even we, if we are very good at spec and tech, like probably the best. Uh, I, would, I don't know. No, I'm joking. There are a lot of people helping the organization. If you're willing to help us, just write us on any channel where you can find spec and tech, like Francesco phone number. And uh, yeah, uh, we are always looking for help. Uh, organizing yeah. spec and tech is a lot of, uh, of work. Yeah. And uh, if you want to give back some, uh, some love, uh, we are here uh, willing to receive it. Yeah, actually every single night, <laughs> every event that we organize, we have uh, the night that actually lasts till 1 or 2 a.m. And then you need to actually clean up the room. And it's a lot of effort and it's a lot of time. Yeah, but enough the boring stuff. Let's and go yeah, on. and we have, <laughs> and no, that's what I'm saying. Stop like, talking about us. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, we always have a lot of help from you. And we thank everyone that's here and that helps us. And as it may be know, we turned two years old a couple of uh, weeks ago. And for this reason, we really wanted to do something big. So we decided to do an event during the Trento Smart City. And that's actually Future Cities. And we start with the first speaker, Estefania Tapias, oh, and it's, it's then... No, 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 hold no, no. on, hold on, hold on. Uh, here, an applause for Estefania. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Directly, directly from Zurich, from the beautiful Zurich, left this morning, will leave tomorrow, came here only for this event. And the second one, Roberto Saracco, an applause for him as well. He's actually, he's actually the guy that left the room, so <laughs> for safety reasons. So when he will come back, I will need to leave. <laughs> yeah, actually, Roberto is one of the few people that had the pleasure of uh, speaking at two spec and text. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we really like his yeah. speech. Sorry if anyone of other people <laughs> who spoke just once so is in the room. Sorry. Yeah. We, we, just before starting, we really need to thank our sponsors that actually are the ones that are sustaining us, that are making the event possible. There are a lot of logos here, a lot of companies that are giving their time and their efforts uh, to support us from my organization, YT Digital. Yeah, Belka, which is my company. We do software development and we are hiring. Then we have and then, uh, <laughs> hiring. a front end developer <laughs> in JavaScript. And uh, then we right, have then Impact the Hub, <laughs> which is the co working space where we are uh, uh, on, the, on the normal events, not the one in the beautiful city center of Trento, then Segata, which is the provider of the best feature of spec and tech, which is the spec. <laughs> and then JetBrains, uh, uh, who is giving us free licenses for their software, Faturing Cloud for their uh, Fature software, uh, because, you know, low. And then Diginate for stickers, and uh, Red Bull for 
uh, Red Bulls. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Red Bulls. Uh, and then uh, uh, tonight we actually have one event, one sponsor yeah. that is. Uh, no, no, it's, it's later, I guess. No, no, it's later. And open our content event. that we he will talk more about uh, the, the the company and everything because he's the main sponsor of tonight's event. And uh, in as a matter of fact, uh, we should have some slides. And yes. all right, here we are. So we leave the word Please. to Gabriele for five minutes uh, presentation. Five. <laughs> of open content. Wrong. Thank him a lot because he's the one that is sponsoring our event and giving us the spec and the beers. <laughs> many thanks, everybody. I have just uh, five minutes, so I have to run. Uh, many thanks uh, to Spec and Tech for the great organization. Uh, it's not the first time, you see. Uh, so, uh, you know Spec and Tech, but maybe not open content. We are a local company and uh, we started building very complex websites during the years. Uh, but not only. During the time we discovered that uh, this public information, public because uh, it is provided by a public organization too, has to appear in many different ways on uh, many different channels. We have to grant that it has to be print, so we implemented web to print uh, um, 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 uh, tools, and it has to be um, uh, provided through uh, API. And uh, we had to grant uh, to the public officers, but not only, that uh, just one person has to uh, uh, manage many channels and uh, many devices at once. So how to do that? So first of all, separating strongly the content from uh, uh, the devices and coding uh, as much as possible the competence, the know-how that every uh, public officer has uh, using our application using a very um, simple to be used application. Uh, numbers uh, are very interesting because uh, thanks to the Consortio dei Comuni Trentini and uh, the project Common Web, the platform is spread locally in many, many municipalities. Almost all the local municipalities are using this application. Uh, there are a lot of content, structured content in particular, but what is more important is the number of people involved that actually know perfectly what a data is and uh, what we can do with data. So uh, the community of uh, the editors is the, the real beating heart of the, the project. So during the, the time we discover that uh, uh, what is the must, uh, then the first point in which the information become uh, public. Of course, the institutional website of every municipality and another kind of uh, public organization, of course. It was not that obvious at the beginning, but we tried to start from data uh, to uh, uh, have another, another idea in mind, uh, trying to uh, change completely the relationship between public organization, public administration, and citizen themselves. Uh, using uh, uh, open government, of course, there are um, different keywords very important for us, transparency, participation, accountability, that are important for uh, many different reasons, and they are not only uh, a legal obligation, but opportunities for uh, municipalities. Starting from data, we created a large network of data, and we published uh, uh, automatically and constantly updated data on uh, European Data Portal. Uh, the numbers are very interesting, and uh, we tried to uh, implement services on data, of course, with the help of uh, many other uh, companies. Uh, this is a very stupid but uh, um, very clear example. The, uh, we invented a new calendar, event calendar. The difference uh, is that uh, here is uh, involved the citizen, uh, so the organizer of the event, which is involved by the public administration. So in this sense, uh, uh, the um, public organization uh, changed their the role and uh, uh, they, make a, a step, they, they made a step behind to uh, enable the, um, what, what we call as a, a chain of trust, so which is very important in terms of accountability, for example. Uh, so we have from one side the uh, editor, the citizen, which produce content and uh, organize uh, events, and from the other side, uh, a citizen that can reuse the information. In this sense, uh, considering how much is homogeneously sp spread the platform on the, the region, uh, it's possible for a citizen to dialogue, to talking with a single public administration. It is the sensation that he has. 
Uh, it is possible because you have a very robust uh, uh, platform uh, um, architecture behind, uh, which enable this process and which uh, um, enable uh, a lot of uh, um, API layers. And because we are using a, a robust also uh, content model, which uh, we are updating constantly uh, with the help of uh, um, Team Digitale and uh, Agit, we are th that are doing uh, during these years uh, a very important, I think, uh, and a revolutionary kind of job. Uh, so, what we are doing in the end, playing with the building blocks, uh, because uh, once uh, we spread our, applica our basic application, our framework, it's possible for us and for many other companies to build microservices. Uh, Open Agenda is just an example of microservices. We are uh, implementing a, a lot of tools. Actually, uh, so in the morning, uh, we have to, to think always about users, in particular, user involved into a community, not only uh, local communities, always with open government uh, in mind, uh, trying to involve uh, technological and research partners that we have, implementing open source solution and involving as much as uh, possible other companies. We discovered that uh, it's very interesting uh, one, w once the other companies can win with our solutions. But we have a problem. <clears throat> we have to grow. We are growing, but not enough. So if you have competencies, if you think uh, you don't have enough competencies but a strong motivation to work uh, in, this, uh, in this sector, you are invited to send us our CV once you see uh, the kind of competencies we are looking for. Many thanks for your time. Woo! Thank you. Thank you again very much uh, to Open Content for helping us organizing this wonderful event. And thanks for... Mac OS for being so simple each time. Uh, Francesco is actually a Mac boy. Um, all wow. right. Can you switch the slides? No, he, no, no. no. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. We go back go back on track. Thanks a lot for uh, presentation by Gabriele. So. We go back to the point and then we introduce you to the speakers, but first we show you a very, very nice thing that probably you didn't notice. So this was kind of um, a couple of months ago when uh, uh, Assessora Maule came to our office to actually talk about this event and start organizing it. And uh, yeah, we said, okay, we want to do something, we sent the content, and uh, this was what was printed on the brochures that most of you have, you know? You can get some of them at the tables. But there was something wrong. Uh huh. Um, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but our website is actually spec and dot tech, <laughs> and it was a nightmare. We were like, "Oh, whoa! There's a wrong URL on the brochure." But, but let's look at the bright side. Maybe it's free, and we can just buy it yeah. and and resolve it, right? No, but, right? But it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. We actually looked for spec dot tech. And it was a yeah. guy named Bobby Speck <laughs> yeah. being a developer in Los Angeles. If you're looking at us, hi, Bobby. Uh, actually, we sent an email to, to Bobby, and he replied in one second. And he was able to redirect all the traffic coming from Italy for this month towards uh, the west website. So Bobby, applause for you. Yeah, so yeah, we, we live. We really live in a beautiful world, people. If you don't believe it, we live in a beautiful yeah, world. So this event is sponsored by Bobby Speck yeah, yeah. as well. <laughs> so, so actually, our website is actually spec and dot tech. So please go there. You can see all the previous issues, all the past talks. You can follow us on our channels on Twitter, LinkedIn, Telegram, Instagram, Instagram. as well. Too. Yeah, there are a lot yeah. of stories from yeah. tonight. Yeah. Yeah, and then. If you want to be more active, join our uh, Slack group. We discuss about stuff there, about conferences, about uh, new developer languages. And uh, there's one thing for tonight. Do you have to donate? As always, we say, yeah, what do we say, Julio? No, please don't. Yeah, OK. No. No, OK. Don't donate. No, you can donate, of course. Michele has been there for this. We pay him for people for, for donating. But no, if you donate something for the association. But, but please don't. Yeah, but if you donate, we actually give you a license uh, of JetBrains for, for one year. 
and uh, most importantly, you're actually supporting the spec because we have a big catering tonight, a catering for 200 people. And uh, yeah, it's been prepared. Yeah, they're, they're, they're serving, they're actually. actually. There are people suffering eating yeah. spec. You can see it in yeah. the next slide. Yeah, yeah. So please it's stop donating. This is happening, you see. And there are people from catering working until yeah. late night. Yeah. So please stop. This is terrible. Yeah. Stop it. And tonight we're gonna have a catering from like a gastronomy online, and we need to thank them as well. We, we dream of an event just called Tech. No spec, no spec, no spec. <laughs> okay, enough bullshitting people. We are here, and then we leave the word for future cities. The first speaker is Stefania Tapias from Zurich. Big applause. Yeah, I can do this. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No. I think this is working. Okay. Hello, everyone. So, first of all, thank you for the awesome team of, of Spec and Tech. I, I'm not hiring, so <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> and I'm vegetarian, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a shame for me, but they promised me they will have veggies today. So, um, yeah, so my name is Estefania Tapias, as it was introduced. I work at ETH Zurich. Um, I am a postdoc. I work at a lab called the Chair of Information Architecture. And today I'm going to change the word of smart cities to responsive cities. I hope they're not going to kick me out at some point. But we'll see how it goes. Um, this goes down. Yeah. So I already introduced myself. I also work part-time in the Future Cities Laboratory in Singapore. I don't commute every week, but I do have to um, talk to them once a week. And I also, I'm also here because I'm also part of the EIT alumni or and of the Climate Kick Alumni Association. That's how I met Francesco. Don't worry, I'm not going to tell them about our crazy parties. Um, but that's also how I know him and how I know Spec and Tech. And so, let's start with the serious part. So, we at our lab, we have been talking about how to transform this idea of the smart cities more into like the next generation of the smart cities, what could it be? And we came up with the word responsive, responsive cities, which for us is the next generation of the smart city. So the dynamic behavior of the cities is what differentiates the smart city from the responsive city. So the, as you know, the smart city is based on technology, so it's technology driven, it's all about the sensors, how to connect different sensors, how to collect data, how to get big data for cities and, and how to process this data and so on. But for us, something was missing, and that's why we wanted to go to the step to the responsive cities. So the responsive cities build on the smart cities, so it doesn't mean that we have to completely delete what the smart cities does, but it builds on all the technology, but it takes the citizen again into the center of the decision making. So we want to take again the citizen, we want to uh, study its needs, but not only to collect data from them, because that's also another topic, but also to develop the city together with the citizens. And one of our tools, that one of the tools that we have been developing for the responsive cities is called the Citizen Design Science. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a weird word, I will explain it a bit later. Um, but it's one of the tools that we use to study uh, how, to, how can we go from the smart cities idea to the responsive cities. Um, but then we also, we didn't came up with this idea from one day to another. There's actually a huge uh, lab at the Future Cities Laboratory working on this. And it was a process uh, for a long time. And we were very lucky that we could develop uh, MOOCs, which are massive open online courses. I don't know if anyone has heard of this. Has er anyone taken a MOOC before? Come on, we're all tech people, no? No? Yes? Okay, so, um, so we developed this Future Cities MOOC series, which also help us uh, in the development of the research of how we can go from the smart cities to the responsive cities. 
So this was a process of four years. Uh, we started. Um, uh, we started with the idea that we wanted to create the first uh, series of MOOCs uh, dealing, with, uh, dealing with the development of cities, dealing with the development of future cities, and urban, we call it urban MOOCs. And we started in 2014, and we now we have our future cities MOOC series in EDX, so also you can have a look at them. And by now, we have 150,000 people registered in all of the, of the four MOOCs we have right now. Um, just some statistics of, how, of the people that registered to our MOOCs. They are mainly coming from the US and from India, so it's actually quite interesting um, uh, multicultural uh, discussion panels. And yes, we started in 2014 with our Future Cities MOOC. So the idea of this Future Cities MOOC was to take one of the courses of, that we taught at ETH, which was called Future Cities, and we wanted to teach it to everyone around. But then after the first MOOC, we thought, um, we thought okay, we are collecting pictures, we are collecting exercises from people, but I mean, it cannot end there. We cannot just keep collecting data from people and then just keep it there. So afterwards we developed our next MOOC which was on livable cities and in this MOOC we already started wanted to start being more interactive with the people. We started talking with them more into our discussion panels and when they gave us pictures, when, they, when we asked them questions about their cities and they hand in pictures, we started also developing online tools. Uh, actually, this was a game that one of my colleagues developed just for fun. But uh, he took all of the pictures that we were collecting and he, he developed a game of uh, guess where this picture is from. And actually, we did an art exposition with this, so we also uh, tried to make a bit of fun without it, with this. But then again, we thought, okay, but this is really not, not enough. I mean, we are teaching people around the world about things that we developed in Switzerland, which probably it's not adaptable to it, it's not applicable to every part of the world. And then on top of that, we're collecting pictures and then we're just doing games out of that. So then we thought, okay, we're going to do our third MOOC, and this third MOOC we're going to call it Smart Cities. But not because we wanted to push the Smart Cities idea, but because we wanted to rethink the concept of Smart Cities, what Smart Cities means, and we wanted to start developing the new tools from there to be able to interact with the participants around the world. So we gave some uh, different tools again. We wanted to play around with this idea of smart cities. We wanted to really go into the different topics, the different terminologies. We even created also another uh, online tool which collected data from everyone around the world, but not only data about, uh, actually, for example, we collected data from temperature. So we asked people to take one simple uh, temperature device uh, record uh, the temperature, but then uh, tell us how they were feeling in a rank from uh, zero to one. So that was actually quite interesting. And we also started developing our first citizen design science tool, which... I think I can. So we, we practiced this before, but it's not working. Okay, good. So we started in this MOOC developing our first citizen design science app, which is a web modeler for participants, for them to design. So we gave them a, a design problem. We told them, actually in this case, it was a K, uh, slum in Cape Town. And then we told them a problem. We asked them to uh, design something for, to enhance the, 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 the density or the development in this slum. And then people could uh, create their own designs, then also save the design that they were creating. And, uh, and then the design was saved in, a, in our server. And then at the end, we had different designs from around the world. So the next exercise was to have um, different, you can see here, we had like tons of designs from people from around the world. And they started voting for the, the ones they thought that was the best. I think that's all. 
Uh, so they started also voting. So it was not only like, okay, you create your own design, you have a problem, but you also can look into the other people's designs and start discussing and start voting for the ones that you think are the most suitable. But this was a very early prototype of our tool. Uh, we, we, we used the Smart City, well, we used the Smart Cities MOOC to try it out, uh, also to give it to the people to see how the, it was working. And actually, we thought, okay, now we are ready. We're going to do our responsive cities MOOC. So our last MOOC from our uh, Future Cities series, which ended up with the idea of responsive cities. So here we wanted to, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, we wanted to put the citizen in the center of the design or, and the development of the city and not using them to collect data, but asking them to help to develop the city. Uh, so here we, um, we again, we develop a, a, a bit more our tool for collecting data and we develop a bit even more our uh, online modeler, which by the way, it's called Kua Kit. <laughs> it's a very funny name, I still don't know why. Um, but we develop it even more and then we even put a case study in Singapore uh, with, I mean, all the, the objects are a bit more developed, as you can see. And people, and we also gave them a little bit of a more challenging um, problem. And they started giving us very interesting uh, ideas. They also started voting. And it was actually quite interesting because this is actually um, a project that is happening in Singapore. So just to give you a bit of context, uh, it's an area in Singapore that uh, currently is uh, where the shipping containers are uh, stored. And they want to uh, re transform all, those, all of this area and they want to develop it into uh, an urban area with a residential area, commercial area, and so on. So actually people around the world are actually participating in the development of this part of the world. So this is our all future cities MOOC. If you want to know more about it, you can go and check it out. But all of this story is also to tell you how we develop our citizen design science tool, or our citizen design science as our tool for the responsive cities. So what is citizen design science? So we want to connect three different things. On one hand, participation, so participation of the citizens which is not a new idea. Uh, citizen participation has been there for, for a long time, especially in Switzerland. Um, but we wanted to connect the tech part. We wanted to connect the technology, the Internet of Things, all of this new development that has been uh, out there uh, since some years now. So we wanted to connect participation and online. And then this is called citizen science. So actually in citizen science, the people become kind of urban scientists or scientists themselves. So they help science, scientists to uh, doing the, the development of their scientific methods. Just to give you an example, citizen science uh, started in the field of astronomy because astronomers wanted to uh, uh, group the different galaxies but there were so many galaxies that they couldn't do it all by themselves. So what they did is that they sent a lot of pictures to people around the world and asked them to help them classify all the galaxies. And then this was called uh, citizen science. And then after that also the, the, the scientists working with birds, with animals, they also started using this method uh, to have the help of the people. Then the other aspect we wanted to introduce into the citizen science because at the end we are city planners, we are architects in our lab, so it was the design part. And the design and participation becomes the citizen design. So it's more when the people, where, where the citizens start getting into a participation, but they start designing themselves, they, they start creating uh, new ideas. Then now we have citizen design, we have citizen science, and our new uh, topic, which is our tool for responsive cities, is called uh, citizen design science. So we want to combine the three aspects, the participation part, the online, the tech part, the Internet of Things part, and the design part of the citizens. 
So by now, the current situation is that we've been actively using this idea of citizen design science uh, for different projects uh, around the world. At the beginning, you saw an example of Cape Town from uh, the slums. Afterwards, you saw another example in Singapore, which the, with, which the project that I was telling you before is called Intangent Pagar, where, where they want to redevelop this whole area. And uh, in this part, uh, our researchers at the Future City Laboratory, they have been working very hard to use these tools, to use the KUA kit, to use all of this online participation of people to really bring the, 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 the science to the citizens, to ask them to help the development, but not only to collect data from them or not only to collect ideas from them, but also to show them how they can participate, to, to teach them a new method, an online method that they can use and they can, with that they can help the, the planners and the, for, the, for the governance of the city. So this is all the part of uh, citizen design science, which is the tool of responsive cities. Again, responsive cities is the new generation of the smart cities. We want to bring the citizen again into the center of the development of the city. And what's next? Uh, unfortunately, the, we don't have a fifth uh, MOOC for our series because I think we cannot come up with a new topic in a year. But um, we, we have our MOOCs online, uh, they're still running, so you can have a look at that. We're also actively using this KUA kit and these online tools that we have been developing to really keep uh, developing this idea of the responsive cities or the citizen design science because this is, this is a new upcoming area which is still in the early stage of development and we're still wanting to to check out if it's working and also together with the citizens so it's really like a, a bottom-up approach and we also are on the development of our publication of uh, our future cities MOOC series where we explain all of this process from smart cities to responsive cities how we have been developing this since four years and also since more years before that and uh, the book is called City in Your Hands, and I hope it's going to be available soon. And this is all from my side. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you're not very hungry. I think they show you a lot of pictures of spec before. <laughs> so, yes, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Mm. No, no, keep it, keep it. And actually, we have many questions. Um, Julio, I don't know if Julio is on the other side of the room taking the. Can you? Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> so That's magic. We don't want to make this oh, room. I hear him. The second room. Yeah. Here, yeah. So this is now the most important room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we will receive the first question from here if you have one. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we can just go to the second room. Yeah, yeah. Anyone here? I know you're better, yeah, guys? Any question from here? Somebody, somebody? I have a question. Yeah, you do have a question. <laughs> Can I take a picture of the room? <laughs> of the room of you? Yeah, sorry. I know you're going to hate me right now, but... Please, please make sure to... No, but I actually <laughs> have another question. I actually have another question, so it's very interesting because last night I was giving a talk on... Um, actually on woman empowerment, which was a different topic, which I feel I'm not an expert, to be honest. But it's very interesting to see that now it's a room full of guys. And then I thought like, okay, today probably I'm doing man empowerment, yeah. no? <laughs> no? Actually, the, the women are in the other room. Ah, they're okay. in the other room, oh. <laughs> no. Shame. Okay, anyway. any question here? I actually have a one for you. Like, um, you said 150,000 people at your MOOCs? Yes. Co-design in the city? Yes. Okay, and yes, yeah, Rudolf, yeah. Mm. From all, all, all around the world and redesigning it, then who's actually evaluating the proposals and are these actually taken into consideration by the municipalities? Yeah, exactly. So the interesting part about that is that people themselves are voting and are, yeah, are voting for, for, the, for the other designs that other people are designing. So actually it becomes like a self feedback mechanism between citizens so it's not that someone has to be on the back saying okay this is wrong this is right no but they they themselves start discussing start like we actually also have a panel discussion and it's really 
crazy and incredible how many new ideas and discussions are being developed, but actually they are the ones who are uh, like rating and doing all of these things. Until now for the MOOCs, we haven't really taken like a real project that the cities, cities will take on, but we've been developing projects on the site that can be used by the, by the, city, uh, by, by the city authorities. And the other thing is that one of my colleagues, for his uh, research, he's uh, processing all the data, but this is just on the back. So. Cool. Question. Julia. Hey. No, it's our turn. All right, all right. We're waiting for you. Lower room. Okay. Hi. I was also wondering, uh, is there a participant selection? I mean, can anyone participate and try to design a city or...? Yes, so yeah. right now it's connected to the MOOCs, so you actually have to register to the MOOC. Um, if you don't want to get any certificate for the MOOC, you can do it for free, it's online, free for everyone. And then you just have to follow the instructions and check the video clips before just to understand a little bit the context. And then go to the link and then do all the exercise. And, and is the result, I mean, like comparable with a professional job? Well, I mean... Yes, actually, this is a very interesting question because we always get the questions from like the professional city planners saying like, okay, are you trying to, to get us out of the job or what? What are you guys trying to do? But actually, no, it's very interesting because they actually need the feedback from the, from the citizens. So it's not like the citizens are designing the city by themselves because, of course, they also need other skills. Uh, to that's what, end up with, that's a, what with something, but it's a help, it's a support, it's a feedback that they can use to, to iterate. I don't know if you get, whoa, I don't know if you get the greatness of the, um, of the concept, but basically they're saying, okay, we give you the course for free and you're designing stuff that then we can use to redesign the city. It's super, it's, it sounds stupid, but it looks uh, super awesome. Julio, any question from your room? Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, go. It's a shame I cannot see. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I see you because you have a orange. You're the California guy, yeah? yeah? You're no orange. Yeah. Okay, I, I really uh, like the idea of um, refraining the whole concept of smart city to responsive city um, because. It always seems that we're gathering information and not doing anything with it um, to really uh, move forward the whole idea of bettering um, the, uh, the people that live in the city's lives. Mm -hmm. um, other than the move, what, are, what, what is happening with data other than the, the participants of the MOOC are providing to make uh, better responses and what have you seen in the field? You mean like the extra data they give for the MOOCs or in general no, for... Uh, uh, from a broader perspective. Yes, from a broader perspective, I mean, what we've seen in other projects apart from what we are developing is that constantly there's this collection of massive data from Swiss citizens, and as you mentioned before, nothing really happens. I mean, they just collect data and then probably they optimize systems, but that's all what they do, but they don't really um, involve the people. So, I mean, to be honest, we haven't really seen much. And for us, the MOOCs, I mean, as funny as it sounds, for us, yes, it was a way of uh, teaching into the outside, but really for us, it was also how we could get people involved in the topics and not only us showing them, okay, this is how we do it, but also pe getting really like a, a strong research process and dynamics for us. So really the MOOCs have been the only way that we could really reach so many citizens around the world and we could reach so many people to really work on the tools and really make it better. So apart from MOOCs, I haven't heard from the, like this really massive data participation idea. So if I answered your question, I hope. Any other question from this side? Yeah, over there. I just wanted to say uh, that it's interesting that it serves, now I understand it serves as a... Where is it? 
<laughs> it's still the same guy. Ah, uh, I was like looking for someone. It's there. the same person. <laughs> ah, okay, sorry. No, that, that uh, the MOOCs serve as another stream of information to inform other than just uh, sensors uh, and other data. Yes, yeah, I mean, for us, we, it, it was not enough. First, I mean, wh when I showed the storyline first, we were like, okay, we keep showing how we do things here, but I mean, probably in India, things were completely different, so what are we doing here? And then we started, because, because of this weird feeling that we were having, we're okay, let's start interacting more with them, let's start developing these ideas together with people around the world, not only showing information. So, yeah. Cool, we have a question here, Julia. Yeah, sorry, uh, I did interrupt you before, sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I have a question. Do you have any limitation you'd, you'd like to overcome using MOOC? Uh, or maybe do you want to use any other tool or approaches in the future? Yes, actually one of the limitations we're seeing right now is that, for example, our first MOOC, it was developed in 2014, and already, because it's a very, uh, a topic that changes all the time, like really fast. Already the, the MOOC that we developed in 2014 is already super outdated. So actually the platform that we're using, EDX, they, they ask us to keep it there, but we actually would love to change it because already there's a lot of things that cannot change. So if someone out there is a big entrepreneur with a huge vision, <laughs> I think a platform with MOOCs that actually can adapt uh, like very fast and that are not very static and that you just record the things put it out there and keep it there forever but really like kind of the MOOCs that can, can be adapted like every I don't know every week even or something like that that would be incredible so that's one of the limitations that like it's very static and it can become like that there, there's no there's really difficult to update it that's one of yeah and okay, thank you <laughs> Cool. All from this side, I guess. Julia? Yeah, I think that we are on time, so okay. we'll keep it like that. Okay. So, cool. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for this Thanks. weird phone thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming there now. Yeah. But See you in a couple of seconds. Cool. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. A big applause for Stefania. Yeah. See you on... Yeah. Should I... It was actually seeing you on the other side, Julia. Okay, give me a second. I don't wanna. Okay. Need to go to switch back. Bravo, Julia, vieni qua, Darmia. Vieni qua, cazzo, c'è tornare su questo. Ecco, va bene. No, posso, posso, posso. Ah, è strano. Okay, cool. Okay. Second, whoa. Second speaker for the night. All right. Okay, yeah. We actually didn't warn you, but differently from other spec and tech, we don't have a break in the middle. Just because of, uh, you see, the oven is getting warm, and at the moment there is no food, and the spec is still um, waiting for you to be eaten. So we go straight to the second speaker. Yeah, courage. Keep safe for half an hour, and then there's going to be food till 11.30. And when we say food till 11.30, it means that you will keep on eating till 11.30. All right, so enough with the talk. Uh, we would like to welcome uh, Roberto Saracco on the stage. Thank you very much for being here twice. And sorry for the very cold situation. <laughs> Actually, I was sick till yesterday, and, and I think I'm going to be sick tomorrow as well. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Anyhow. Okay, buonasera, good evening. Yes, thank you. So is the one going pointing down. Well, what I would like to share with you tonight are some ideas about digital twins. How many of you know about digital twins? Hands up? Wow, so many. <laughs> okay, well, so it's something new. Well, that might also give uh, an idea for the next MOOC, okay, about cities. Well, let, let me start by, by saying that uh, bits uh, is something normal today, okay? Everybody knows about bits and it's well, nothing new. But just uh, 23 years ago, this guy, Nicholas Negroponte, wrote a book, Being Digital. 
And at that time, it really made the impression. And part of the impression, as he's saying there, was the fact that uh, why is this guy talking about bits? There are so few of them, okay? You were not born at that time. Um, well, he said that uh, this uh, transformation into bits in us is unstoppable. And uh, before you even, even realize that, you will be find yourself uh, flooded in bits. And as a matter of fact, we are just starting to understand what, uh, what it means uh, living in, in a world of bits. And this talk is about uh, this living in a world of bits connected to a, to a city. Now, before getting into that, let me say that there's a clear difference between atoms and bits. If I have atoms and I'll give you my atoms, you've got my atoms, but I no longer have it, right? But if I have a bit and I'll give you my bit, you have my bit, I still have a bit. So we are transforming basically from what is usually known as the economy of scarcity, that's the economy of atoms, into the economy of abundance. And this changes the rule of the game. Because all of our economy has been based on the idea that something was valuable because there was very little of that. And many people wanted to have it. But nowadays, it's no longer like that. With bits, you can duplicate bits as, ma as many times as you want. And you change the basic rule of economy. If I have a song in bits, I'll give you the song and I still have the song. And this is the reason why basically a song is not worth anything anymore. Yes, you may want to pay 90 cents to get a song out of uh, some places on the, on the web, but actually you're not paying for the song. What you're doing, you're paying for the convenience of getting that song, because you can get the very same song, the same quality, by ripping YouTube or something like that. So you're not paying for the song. The song is value is zero. You're paying for the convenience of getting the song. It's a completely different world. So we're moving from the economy of the atoms to the economy of bits. The problem with the economy of bits is that uh, since the value is so low, basically zero, it's difficult to make money. But now we are seeing a shift toward the economy of data. Now, data may, might seem the same thing as bits, right? You put several bits together, you get data. But actually, it's a different story. Because data is something that uh, starts to have some meaning, some value, because it's scarce again. And if you have so many bits around, remember I was just talking about convenience, what you want to have is to be able to get exactly the few bits that are worth, that make sense to you. And this is difficult. So we are shifting again into the economy of data. Now, this shift uh, you can see represented here, because when you have uh, bits, then you can look at these bits and you can understand What's that? What does it mean? And in a city, you can have a sensor, you can have a camera showing you that there's a traffic jam. So this is a picture sent out in bits. Some programs can look at that and can have a lead. Yes, there's a traffic jam. OK, but the next step is uh, why is there a traffic jam? It might be because uh, there was a huge gathering of people and it just uh, stopped and people were flowing out and they jammed the road. OK? Or it may be because there's an accident. Well, it's interesting to understand why, because what you really want to do is to understand what's going to happen. What are the trends? Is it going to get worse or not? Well, if it's just people moving out of a place, uh, in, a, in a short while, the people will be out and everything will be fixed. If it's an accident, you have to fix that before circulation can start again. So understanding why to understand what the trends are going to be. And then, of course, it's interesting to understand what can I do to avoid something bad happening, OK? So just imagine we are sensors moving around, OK? And we always wear sensors on ourselves. And we call these smartphones. As you move around, the network knows where you are, where you're going, OK? And can communicate this kind of thing. So after a week, by observing a city, I can tell, just looking at these moving cell phones around, that uh, there's a cell phone that every morning from A to 9 goes to, from A to B. And there's another one that goes from A to C, and so on. Now, if it happens to be a, a jam in a place, I can 
look back and see, hey, in half an hour, there's going to be 2,000 cell phones reaching that point and making the traffic jam worse. So what can I do? Well, I can go back to these many cell phones around the city and say, hey, look, I don't know whether you're planning to go there, but if you do, just don't pass through here. And if there's another phone that is going the same way, but I know it's going in a different place, I would tell the same story, but I will tell that cell phone, rather than go from A to B, moving through C, now go and move through G. So I'm basically rerouting the traffic of the city, just by looking at bits, okay? And look at the history. So this is where the value lies, okay? Now, let's talk about digital twin, what's that? Well, you see, here you have got a, a, a ship, and you got a, a sort of fuzzy ship around, okay? A sort of ghost. And this ghost is made of bits. And these bits are representing the ships. Now, they may represent whatever of the ship. They may just represent the fact that the ship is moving from port A to port B. Or they may include information about the load of the ship, how many containers it has, and something like that. It may contain data about the, the crew of the, of the, of the ship. So, it's not said what is it, but for a certain aspect, it really represents what that ship is. Now, this is nothing new. Uh, you were not born at that time, but uh, there was Apollo 13. And for those of you that like numbers, First. First. First.
verse. Verse. 